In this video, I'll give you 10 quick and essential photography tricks you can implement to make your landscape photography stand out from the average Joe with a mobile phone. If you want to learn more about landscape photography, be sure to like and subscribe. And if there are any of these photography tricks you are already implementing in your landscape photography, let me know down in the comments. So let's get started. If you want to stand out and make different photography to an average Joe with a phone camera, try different and unique perspectives. Instead of just photographing a scene from eye level, try getting low to the ground or climbing to a higher vantage point. You can use a wide angle lens to really emphasize an interesting foreground. In this example, I used a low perspective to get close to my foreground and tilted the camera down. This resulted in the stone taking up a larger portion of the photo. Likewise with these small bubbles. Here I was even closer to the bubbles and had to focus stack to get everything in focus. You can also get up high and look down on the world. It's often highly beneficial to use a long focal length, a tailor photo lens, to pick out details in the landscape. If you use too wide of a focal length, you risk including too much and the photo can easily end up with too many elements competing for attention. All photographers talk about light, light, and even more light. Be sure to benefit from light. We can't really talk about the best light unless we specify the context. The optimal light is always relative to the scene you're photographing. Sometimes front light is necessary, especially if you want to photograph rainbows. Sometimes side light is beneficial for highlighting shapes of mountains. And sometimes backlight is what you want. Just like in this example. Here the sun backlights the scene and emphasizes all the details and layers. If we take the same scene and hide the sun behind a cloud, the photo is suddenly flat and boring. The light makes the scene come alive. Or in this example from a recent outing, I found this beautiful scene overlooking a small valley with the sun setting behind the opposite ridge. When I arrived, the sun backlit the little amount of moisture in the air, which created this beautiful hazy effect and made the foreground elements stand out from the midground, which stood out from the background. As the sun was setting and the light disappeared, so did the effect and the sense of depth and the trees became a big chaotic mess. So light and shadow draw attention and another great example to show just this is this blue our photo. It's the street lights that draw our attention towards the town and after that our attention is drawn to the big mountain in the background as it stands out relative to the sky. Proper placement of objects in landscape photography is essential for creating a visually pleasing and dynamic composition. The way elements are arranged within the frame can affect the overall balance and harmony of the image, as well as the viewer's eye movement and attention. Due to the central placement of the boat in this example, the use of the branches as an upper frame and the reflection of the branches in the lake, there is no doubt about what you're supposed to look at in this photo. There's a clear subject and how I photographed the subject was with the intent of upping the aesthetic quality of the photo. In this photo, I like the lines of the light on the flowers created by the direct sunlight and shadows of the trees. The sun star works as the anchor point of the photo from where you can explore all the details. And in this example, I create balance in the photo by having an equal amount of visual interest on either side of the middle. There are many compositional tools to pull out of the toolbox and in my ebooks on composition and landscape photography I cover exactly those tools. The ebooks are easy to read with loads of examples and thanks for all the 5 star reviews from all of you who've already got the ebooks. There are links to both of them in the description of this video and if you're in doubt whether you want them or not you can try out the two free light versions first. Moody overcast days with texture rich clouds and maybe rain works great for photography. Although it can be meh to get out in, it can deliver some absolutely insane photos. Photos that average Joe is not taking, because average Joe doesn't go out in rain. Of course, it's still beneficial to have an interesting scene, but whether the scene is interesting and aesthetic in itself, or it's the weather that makes it interesting, bad weather usually adds to the aesthetics rather than takes away from it. Rain can wash out backgrounds, making subjects in the foreground stand out, as in this photo of a beautiful tree. It can help separate elements in the scene, like the islands in this photo, and in both cases simplify the scene without making them boring and add drama to otherwise less interesting scenes. Clouds can create a sense of movement and texture in the sky and can be used to frame or draw attention to specific elements in the landscape, like in this example. Dramatic clouds automatically also add drama to photos. And if you can hit a day with occasional breaks in the cloud cover where the sun shines through, magic can happen and beams of light can occur. Overall, photographing on days with interesting and dramatic clouds can help add visual interest and impact to your landscape photos. If you've seen my videos for any amount of time, you know I'm a sucker for atmosphere. 
fog, mist, showers, snow and particles in the air like dust or sand. A good atmosphere can transform your local little pond into an award-winning photo. In lack of better words, fog just provides a special moody atmosphere to a photo. In this example from Big Sur in California, the sea mist minimizes the landscape so we can just focus on the hills rolling into the inversion. In this example, the fog emphasizes the depth of the forest by making the foreground more contrasty and the background less contrasty, while on top really brings out that fairy tale feeling among the gnarly trees. And in this example, the fog helps to separate the layers of the hills of Tuscany. Learning how to predict fog and generally interesting atmosphere is essential for all landscape photographers. Besides learning meteorology, there are apps like Windy and Clear Outside that can help you out. One of my favorite ways to show scale or a sense of adventure is to include myself or other people in my photos. If there are no one else around, I put my camera on my tripod, use the built-in intervalometer, and then I can walk into the scene and place myself in the compositionally most optimal position. In this example, the photo is nice on itself, but the little human silhouette on the mountain gives a great idea of how big this landscape is. Yet, also a sense of adventure. Likewise, a house, a car or other relatable elements can help give a sense of scale. There's nothing worse than a sharp image of a fuzzy concept, is what Ansel Adams, the arguably most famous landscape photographer of all time, once said. The interpretation of that quote is very clear. You can have the best gear and sharpest lens in the world, but that doesn't automatically make your photos good. It's beneficial to invest in gear that benefits the type of photography you do. If you want to do a lot of mountain photography, a huge DSLR camera with 10 prime lenses and a big and heavy tripod will just slow you down. Don't buy a Leica camera if you don't appreciate the reasons for photographing with it just because other rich people do. If you're a beginner photographer and can't even get your exposure right, then a flagship camera from Sony won't help you. Cameras and lenses are tools. Buy the right tools for the job. Whether you like high contrast black and white photography, saturated epic landscapes or more natural scenes, editing is essential for almost all genres of photography. Raw files are designed to be flat and boring so that photographers can apply their own touch to the photos. And if you're shooting JPEGs, you will still have to apply a picture profile in the camera and which one is more true to the landscape scene in front of you, standard, natural, faithful or landscape. The point is, if you want to get the most out of your photos and at your own touch, you need to learn at least some basic editing techniques. You can always start out with some free software, which probably comes with your camera. But if you really want to improve your editing, programs like Lightroom and Photoshop are hard to ignore as they've basically become industry standards. That's also why I designed my landscape photography course around Photoshop and if you want to learn how I edit my photos like I show in this video, I share all my tricks and techniques in that course. We start out in the easy end learning the programs and advance up through basic editing, masking, cleaning, focus stacking, luminosity masking and advanced blending while I share how to respect the light and avoid the worst editing mistakes. There is a link in the description of the video along with a coupon code to save a bit of money if you want to enroll. So on the ninth trick or tip or whatever we call them, photos don't take themselves and every minute you are not out photographing a minute you won't get the photo. Okay, fair enough. We all have a life besides photography and it is of course also better to work smart and not hard. So if the conditions aren't favorable for what you want, then don't go out. However, in my experience, if you really want to build up a portfolio and learn and internalize photography, the best way to do so is to get out and start photographing. Even on days where you are not sure you will even capture anything, the chances are there may be something unforeseen anyway. You may get some experience you can apply somewhere else or you may find a location that is worth returning to. A good portion of my favorite photos from the past years was unforeseen photos that just happened as I drove past them. Research, preparation and patience are essential skills for landscape photographers because they allow photographers to anticipate and capture the perfect shot at the right time. Researching the location and the conditions such as the weather, the time of the day and year, the lighting and the tides can give a photographer the knowledge they need to be in the right place at the right time, reducing the dependence on luck. Patience, on the other hand, is important because the perfect shot often doesn't happen immediately. The photographer needs to be able to wait for the right moment, whether that's for the light to change or for the subject to move into the right position or the right season. 
So be sure to subscribe to the channel, watch my other videos where I go much deeper into different topics like these, and if you want to learn even more about landscape photography, be sure to pick up my ebooks and enroll in my Photoshop course. I hope you got something from this video. See you next time.